It is my distinct honor to introduce Senator Tim Kaine. who has served as United States Senator representing the great state of Virginia since 2012. And this year, we have the honor of Senator Tim Kaine being our key sponsor of the 25th commemoration of Vietnam Human Rights Day. While Senator Tim Kaine was governor of Virginia, he and his staff were instrumental in helping to affirm May 11 as Vietnam Human Rights Day U.S. State Law H2594, which later was signed into the law in the of the We would not be able to commemorate Vietnam Human Rights Day annually without your support. As a member of the Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Keene has been a leader on foreign policy in the Senate. He believes in maintaining a commitment to the United States values of freedom, democracy, and human rights. He recently led a U.S. Congressional Bipartisan Delegation to South Korea and Vietnam. While in Vietnam, he expressed concerns regarding the human rights condition there. We are very honored to have him here and look forward to his remarks on this very special occasion. Please give your hands for Senator Tim Kaine. Good afternoon. It is such an honor. It is such an honor to be with you today, and I was very happy to be your Senate sponsor so we could have this important event right here in the Park Senate office. I have wonderful staff here, and I want to offer some thoughts, including thoughts about my first visit to Vietnam that was just within the last few weeks. Um, May 11 is a very important day. Uh, when I was governor, I worked together with a bipartisan group of legislators in Virginia to make sure that we would commemorate May 11 as the Vietnam Human Rights Day. And it's a day that's very easy for me to remember because it's my daughter's birthday. I have always wanted to go to Vietnam. Uh, as a member of the Foreign Relations Committee since 2013, I have had significant dialogue together with our Vietnamese community in Virginia. And we have a very strong Vietnamese American community in Virginia. I decided to go with a bipartisan group. There was originally 10 of us, Democrats and Republicans. It's very unusual for that many senators to travel together. Usually it's only two or three. But we wanted to go bipartisan. We wanted to go to Korea first to talk about the nuclear negotiations, which are so critical right now. And then we wanted to go to Vietnam for a series of reasons. Before I went, I met with leaders who were very, very passionate about human rights in Vietnam in our Northern Virginia community, and other leaders came from around the country, and some either, even from other nations, Canada uh, and the UK, to talk to me about the human rights situation in Vietnam. And when we were there for about five days, we did a number of things to demonstrate the friendship between our people and the Vietnamese people. So for example, we initiated a, a massive cleanup of dioxin contamination near Bien Hoa Air Force Base. And we signed a memorandum of understanding between USAID and a number of Vietnamese organizations that represent people with disabilities to focus on work that we can do together. Those were items that were to demonstrate the friendship that our people have for one another. And I will say, this will not surprise you, but it was deeply humbling to me. The expressions of friendship that we received, whether in formal meetings or if I was walking around at 6.30 in the morning with my wife and people playing badminton would stop their games to visit with us. The friendship that we received formally and informally was, was powerful. But we also wanted to meet with governmental leaders to talk about issues that we, where we have shared concerns and issues where we have significant differences. You will be happy to know that in virtually every meeting, well, every meeting that we had with governmental officials, we had significant discussions about human rights issues, and not human rights generally. You've given me your human rights report from 2018 to 2019. We talked about specific individuals who were prisoners of conscience in Vietnam, and we 
asked about their condition. We asked about uh, Vietnamese Americans who are currently in prison. We asked about Vietnamese who were imprisoned as a result of their protests against the 90-year lease legislation proposal that led to protests around the nation last year. We asked about uh, people who are being imprisoned for protesting against crackdown on cyber. We encouraged Vietnam to, to maintain an openness of the internet, which their neighboring nation, China, does not do. And, and relatively, Vietnam's internet is still relatively open compared to China, and that's something we deeply, deeply encourage the government to continue to allow. We met with Vietnamese activists. We met with groups of dissidents in Hanoi, and we met with students in both Hanoi and in Ho Chi Minh City in Saigon, high school students, college students, students at Fulbright University, member, students who are members of the Southeast uh, Asia Leadership Initiative that our government helped start to try to encourage youngsters. Those were probably the highlights of the trip, the interactions that we had with young people, and hearing their activism, and having them stand up and tell us what they were doing to advocate for education, to advocate for environmental causes was very important. In all of these areas, my colleagues, Democratic and Republican, I was actually not the leader of the delegation. The leader was Senator Leahy since he came to the Senate in 1975. He has a little bit of seniority over me. He had been in the Senate for 38 years but by the time I was elected to the Senate. But we raised these issues on a bipartisan way. We also talked about issues where we have some issues in common with the Vietnamese government, mostly concerns about the activities of China. The Chinese island building in the East Sea that is both illegal and also destabilizing to Vietnam, uh, both Vietnam's territorial integrity but also Vietnamese fishing industry. We had significant dialogue about what the United States could do to help Vietnam counter those activities. Um, and, and in all of these meetings, as a first-time visitor, you know, as a first-time visitor, you're trying to understand the situation. Um, I, I had been asked by my Vietnamese community in Virginia to sort of assess the degree to which China was tightening its grip harder and harder and harder upon the government, upon the nation, upon the people of Vietnam. Um, and what I saw was interesting, and this will not surprise you because you stay in so, such close contact uh, with, with your contacts in Vietnam, but I, I saw an amazing spirit in the Vietnamese people who have a nationalist pride in being, being Vietnamese and they do not want any foreign nation to dominate them. I saw that very, very strongly. And it was fascinating, while the government of Vietnam does not like protests, and while they responded very harshly to the protests last summer over the proposal to allow 90-year leases of three economic zones in the country, they responded in a very significant way to those protests, but they have dropped that provision. They dropped the 90-year provision because when they saw how many people came out to the streets to protest against it, how many people were worried about Chinese dominance, it's not back on the table in the assembly now, but we have to keep pushing to make sure it never comes back on the table. We asked about labor rights uh, as we were working on the Trans-Pacific Partnership and, and how much I regret that the U.S. is not now engaged in that discussion. One of the powerful aspects of that was to force Vietnam to finally, um, to finally approve of three important conventions of the International Labor Organization. Um, however, Vietnam is continuing to have trade discussions with the EU, and the EU is asking for those same provisions. And we met with leaders of the Legislative Assembly in Vietnam and asked specifically about the right to organize, the right to have a labor union, the right for that labor union to be independent and not controlled by the government, and, and received assurances, which we are monitoring, that the Vietnamese National Assembly will actually begin to pass, finally, some of these national labor a standards here within the next month. Um, I report that to you to say I, I would not have known what to ask and I would not have known what to insist on had I not met with members of this community before my visit. And some of you know when I came back the first thing I did 
four days after I got back, was sit down with a group of leaders of both the North Vietnamese, of both the Vietnamese and the Korean communities in Virginia to talk about the trip, to report my observations, and then to get a series of questions so that we could follow up and insist that commitments made are monitored and hopefully completed. I want to thank all of you for your passionate, passionate advocacy for democracy and freedom in Vietnam and for your remarkable contributions to our country. Um, the, the, the Vietnamese population of Virginia and the Vietnamese population of the United States is one of our amazing sources of strength. I've seen it again and again and again, how strong and unified this part of our Virginia and American community is. And I pledge to do all I can to work with you to make sure that as American citizens, as American business leaders, as students in this country, we all have exactly the same opportunities. But I also want to be a champion for you as we work together using the leverage that we have with, with normalized diplomatic relations, with discussions ongoing about trade. We should never have those discussions without raising the important human rights issues that you put on our table and raising them in such a way that we can find them on the table. And then the last thing, again, if I can just say on a personal level how much the trip meant to me. We were there on Easter Sunday. And the ability to go to Notre Dame Cathedral in Saigon uh, on Easter, six masses, three in Vietnamese, two in French, one in English, and to see that beautiful cathedral. Sadly, a few days after Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris had burned. But to see that cathedral and visit with people and see the spirit and celebrate uh, Easter Sunday there in the heart of Saigon it was just a, an experience that my wife and I know we will never forget it as long as we live. Uh, we look forward to many more visits and I look forward to much more we work together. And I encourage you to keep up this very, very important work. March 11 is a, May 11 is a special day, but every day needs to be Human Rights in Vietnam Day. Thank you so very much.